looks like a big one. Well, it's not that big. It's 6'5 Creedmoor. It's big enough, I suppose. Nah, it's never big enough, is it? Nothing's ever big enough. Hi guys, this is Rack and Load. And no, I don't know where I'm going with that one. But anyway, let's, let's jump straight into this review then. So this is the Ruger Hawkeye long range target in 6.5 Creedmoor. I'm gonna throw you out some specs before we dig into this review. So the stock is a speckled brown and black laminated stock. So it's a wooden stock, laminated stock with this real nice coloration on and it's really quite grippy as well. Barrel length, 26 inches. Uh, you've got a five eight by five eight by twenty four thread on the end where that muzzle brake is, so you can sort of throw on a can if you know, if you like, which really should you know it's a bit more pleasant to your fellow shooters shooting alongside you. Um, twist rate is one and eight right hand twist ten round magazine. Uh, the finish is in matte black. Weighs eleven pounds. Unscoped. Overall length is 47 to 48 and a half inches, depending on length of pull. And uh, sorry, depending on length of pull, depending on, on how many spaces you put in. Um, it's got five grooves in the barrel. In the sorry, I've sort of I've missed that out. The rifling has five grooves. It has a non-rotating Mauser type controlled round feed extractor. I'm reading this off the website. And it's supposed to be one of the most positive case extractor systems ever invented. And features the fixed blade type ejector that positively ejects empty cases as the bolt is removed, as the bolt is moved fully rearward. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I had no problems with extraction or rejection on this thing. It was throwing the cases literally three feet away from me. Shooting this thing prone, which by the way, I hate shooting prone. I've had surgery on my back and I just don't enjoy shooting prone. But on that day, I thought, you know what? I've, I've not shot prone for a while, so I will and to see how we get on. It weren't too bad to be fair, but I just like to moan. Uh, 20 MOA Picatinny rail uh, as standard, which is nice. Uh, cold, free floated cold hammer forged, 4140 chrome molly steel barrel with, like I said, 5R rifling. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it as far as your major, base, basically your major. Um, Specs are concerned. Just trying to find. Yeah, that's pretty much it as far, as far as your major specs are concerned. So, where shall we start with this thing then? Do you know what? I'm going to jump straight into accuracy because this thing is an absolute laser beam and absolute laser beam. Oh my god! Yeah, even with me me shooting. So now, like I always say. You guys are gonna do way better than me. I know you are. So first of all, ignore the center target because that's my zero, just getting my shizzle together. So this was with, uh, what have we got? Cellular and Bellet uh, Tactical Ammunition and that was 140 grains. 140 grains, yeah, 6.5, full metal jacket, uh, Creedmoor, okay? Let's leave that there. This is my grouping, 100 yards, slight breeze coming from that direction. If I'm shooting that way, it was coming from that direction. So, yeah, slight breeze, sort of five to 10 mile an hour breeze. This is my grouping, 100 yards. Ignore the middle, that's my zero. I don't know what happened there, that was just me. Oh, look at that. Look at that, I am happy with that. That was with Cellular and Bellet ammo, ammo, when I could say it. Hornaday match, 140 grain ELD. Again, same conditions. Slightly better, I, I think. Slightly better with the Hornaday. 
Nice. Mm, yeah. Nice. Lovely. And absolutely lovely. So yeah, this thing is accurate. That's factory ammo, guys. So you guys that like to reload and really sort of get scientific on your ammo, dude, you're going to uh, get some nice groups. Way better than mine. Way better than mine. But that is damn accurate. Oh, I'm just wrecking the joint. Oh. That is damn accurate. And 6.5, as we know, is an accurate round, isn't it? I've not got the box for the... I mean, I've got some three... Yeah, that was the ammo I was using, but this is th a 308 box. But it's the ELD type ammunition with the uh, the red tip there, ballistic tip. So, yeah, damn accurate. Right, let's take it from the top. And by the way, the combination that I was using with this rifle, as you can see, I was using this Hawk Sidewinder scope. And I've got to tell you, it is really nice really nice scope yeah people will be like what sort of mount you got on there and why it's a sports match mount it's a, the only one i had available and it just works it works look at the groups so it works right let's talk about the magazines first of all this comes with the 10 round uh, accuracy international style magazine 308 or uh, 6.5 Creed more because you know they, they sit they fit in the same magazines polymer magazine really a single stacker really nice dead easy to load really nice magazines can't complain pretty damn light as well we'll leave that out for a second right let's take it from the top we'll take it we'll go from the usual end let's go from the rear right go from the rear yeah yeah i know i know no, we won't go any more about talking any more about that, shall we? Because that's just going to be wrong in every way. So, nice soft recoil pad. Not that you really need it for 6.5 because it is nice and gentle to shoot anyway, but real nice soft rubber grippy recoil pad there. QD cups either side. Have you ever used QD cups? I haven't. To be fair, well, I think I did in my airsoft days, but that was a bad hit. Uh, sling swivel stood there. Ambidextrous stock. Now, yeah, totally amb ambidextrous stock. What I found when this come, this, by the way, is kindly on loan from Viking Arms. The uh, cheek riser or cheek piece uh, was the other way round. And I had basically, because me being a lefty, I had that in my face. So I literally just took it apart and spun it around and it works perfectly for me. You've got a bit of a hook there, butt hook, so to speak, to pull the gun into you. I was shooting off my little uh, Coldwell uh, sled, uh, which, you know, I was, I was testing at the end of the day, shooting prone, which don't, like I say, I don't like shooting prone. I just find it uncomfortable, but I don't know, if I was even more comfortable, would I have tightened those groups up even better? Maybe, maybe. Pistol grip, really nice. This stippling as well, guys, that you can see offers traction. Not a great deal, but it does offer quite a bit of traction. So it gives you a nice bit of uh, grip there. So that's, that's nice. Really, really nice patterning as well. I think uh, when I was a kid, we lived in a house where they'd got that sort of pattern on the wall. Yeah, not good, not good. <laughs> not that coloration though. Um, so yeah, the pistol grip, ergonomics this rifle, really, really comfortable. You've got a straight pistol grip there, which is all the rage at the minute. Everyone's liking straight pistol grips on their rifles, especially their target rifles. Moving on to the action itself, all... Um, is it steel? I think it is, you know. Let's give it the magnet test. Yeah, steel action. Okay, so it's no aluminium there. That is all steel action. Get rid of the magnet. All steel bolt as well. Three position. Oh, I've got to put this down, guys. It is, it is getting heavy. Ugh. So you've got, let's talk about the bolt first. Let's get the bolt out as well. I say first, let's, let's talk about the bolt. To get the bolt out, you've got this lever here. If you can see it, oh, I've got to lift it up again. 
So this lever here, you just pull it out like so, to the side. So if you pull that, and basically you can then not, not pull it out on camera. <laughs> yeah, pull it out on camera. There you go. And that is your bolt. So that's basically you pull that lever to the side and then you can pull the bolt out. Not like a Remington 700 where you've got a cute finger on the trigger to extract the bolt. So nice, solid bolt, you know, simple, solid, functional, um, and it, it just works, doesn't it? Just works, so not much you can say about that. I had no problems with uh, feeding of this rifle, extraction, nothing. It just worked every single time, no issues whatsoever. Uh, yeah, you've got to do the same, by the way, to get the bolt back in. See, I'm just testing you, I'm just testing you. To pull that to the side. Now, what I do particularly like about this, although I didn't really use it, there is a three position safety catch. So, obviously, safety's off at the minute. So, if we cock it, so you've got this safety catch here, which you can pull halfway like that. So, the safety's now on. So, nothing happens when you pull the trigger. But you can still open the bolt, you know, and unload it or you can push that safety all the way and it locks in to the back of the bolt if you can just see that and then obviously that stops you from opening the bolt full stop so that's nice for storage or if you just basically you know if you're carrying it um you know you've got it slung on your back or something like that you know you you're hunting with it. Would you really have this one for hunting? It's heavy. It is heavy, guys. Seriously. So, I, I myself, uh, with this being more of a target ranger, I wouldn't really use it for hunting. Okay. Unless you're, you know, you go to the gym five times a week, then you crack on. You crack on. But it's a bit of a weighty one for sort of stalking. I myself would use something a little bit lighter, okay? This is built for accuracy, okay? Accuracy. Yeah, of course, I know you need accuracy when you're hunting, but you know what I mean. It's it's not built for carrying around, <laughs> you know, the moors or something, so it's, it's not built for that. But why solid, solid rifle. Again, magnet test. Oh, the actual, while well, looking at that, the uh, trigger guard is aluminium. Uh, trigger itself, aluminium blade. There is a large oversized magazine release, which is really nice. I love that. Just like a nice, simple magazine release that works and does the job. Like I said, tw uh, built in uh, 20 MOA on the Picatinny rail. That is as standard on this rifle. So you can really reach this thing out, really, really reach it out. Uh, like I said, works really well with this with this Hawk. No, it's not a major high-end scope, but I was getting good results with this combination. And at the end of the day, I've got these, uh, I've got this Hawk uh, scope on test anyway. And a lot of people are like, "Oh, you only have Hawk on air guns." Well, no, I'm I'm running it on centerfire. So that's another story. It, the magazine well itself is nice. Again, all metal, as you'd expect. Everything is just, you know, bang on. Magazines drop freely. So you, you're not sort of, there's no sort of tightness on the magazine and everything's positive. A little bit rattly, but like I said, it's not a hunter you ain't got to worry about, um, you know, been stealthily with this thing. Trust me, you ain't gonna be with that on the end. Um, and then the underside of the Hawkeye, long range, you have a piece of rail here so you can throw on a bipod. Uh, there is a bit more uh, space in here, so it depends where you wanna, where you wanna run a bipod or whatever you wanna fit on it, basically. You might wanna put a another rail on there of some description 
you know, and run it off um, <coughs> off a tripod. Who knows? It's however you shoot. Takedown knots are there and there. Well, that's your, your major takedown knot there to sort of drop the uh, the action out. Well, there and there, basically. Trigger and all the action bits and pieces. Uh, would you really want to strip it down? Um, you don't really need to, to be fair. Uh, straight out of the factory, if you're buying a factory rifle like this, uh, you don't really need to take it out of the stock. Uh, you can pretty much do everything that you need to do to it by just taking the bolt out. The trigger, this is a demo rifle. The trigger is really nice, to be fair. It really is nice. We'll give it a pull. You know we will. Right, let's give this trigger a pull. See what it's doing. It felt pretty damn nice, to be fair. So let's just give it a pull. Oh, yeah, baby. Two pounds, 15 ounces on the trigger. That is a nice trigger. Just Let me just remind myself of it again. So it's two stage. Oh, that is a nice trigger. Really nice trigger. Like I say, demo rifle. It's had a lot of use. You know, it's gone to different reviewers and stuff. It's had a bit of wear and tear. But sometimes that's better anyway, you know. As I say sometimes, you know, you get you get a rifle sort of straight out of the box. You'll find it'll have newness issues. And then with a rifle that's had a lot of ammo a lot of ammo through it and a lot of hammer, then you you basically see how things are wear and tear, which I find interesting as a reviewer. So um but yeah, what a real nice Real nice rifle to prepare. Heavy barrel, heavy barrel, and you've got this brake that comes as standard. Uh, you'd probably want to can it, or would you? I mean, whatever. Whatever floats your boat. I didn't really mind kicking up the dust with that. It's quite good fun. QD mount there as well on the other side. I'll show you the other side. Whew. Spin around without destroying my set. Okay. Nice, easily adjustable, cheap piece. Like I said, I swapped this round uh, just to um, make things more comfortable for my left-handedness. So pretty much you just flip this and you can adjust it uh, backwards and forwards and up and down. So that is really cool. I say it works well. And um, with it being polymer as well, it's nice and warm on the cheek. So you're not gonna stick to it in sub-zero temperatures which is always a bonus. Now, I don't think I've got a manual for this rifle. Here's the box. I'm just digging through the box, guys. Uh, I don't think there's a manual for Oh, no, actually, I tell a lie, tell a lie. I've got the manual, I've got the manual. Let's get rid of the box. Oh, the rat cave is busy, guys. I've got stuff everywhere at the minute. Right, the manual itself, basically, this is uh, for the scout rifle, but <clears> at <throat> the end of the day, these Rugers are all pretty much the same. All your um, usual do's and don'ts, but if you're in America, it tells you all your, all your uh, different state laws, which is quite interesting. Not applicable here in uh, Oblighty. So, Tells you all the bits and pieces of the rifle and, you know, safety, safety stuff, loads of safety stuff. So I'm just, I'm just trying to just flick through this. Not a bad manual, black and white, black and white pictures. There's your, um, you take down nut, like I said, to take the stock off if you, if you wish. Trigger adjustment, I think you can, I think you can adjust the trigger. I think you do have to actually take the, the stock off to adjust the trigger. I'm just trying to find, oh, this is about open sights for the um, the scout rifle. Are there any exploded diagrams? Yes, there is, that's what we like. So yeah, that's the manual, it's not bad. It, you know, it is what it is. 
But no, I really enjoyed using this. I do like 6.5 Creedmoor. It's it's always dead easy to shoot. You know, it's gentle. It's it's accurate. It shoots straight. It's just a nice, nice round. I do like the round. I am a big fan of it, to be fair. I love 308. It's a bit more punchy. You know, a bit more of a rainbow uh, trajectory compared to the 6.5. You know, if, you, if you're if you wanting to reach out accurately, the 6.5 is the way to go. I'm not going to tell you guys how to suck eggs anyway. But no, I found the Ruger Hawkeye long range a pleasure to shoot. Like I said, it was just a, just gentle to shoot, gentle to shoot. Would you go 6.5? I don't know, if you're seriously into your long range stuff, then definitely, but the cost is a little bit different to 308. You know, you've, you almost double the price of 308, almost or thereabouts. So just consider that. Um, and I don't know, this present time is 6.5 Reddit, well, is any ammo readily available where you live i know you you guys in america are having problems um with getting ammunition and whatnot but um but no it's a, I, I really enjoyed using it it's a nice rifle quality i always find ruger can be iffy a little bit you know uh I mean, I've noticed on this test rifle we've got a bit of rust here and there i know it is a demo rifle i get that but I know a friend of mine, he had a Ruger Precision rifle, the RPR, when they first came out. And he was, he'd shot that in uh, rainy conditions, which is generally what you get here in the UK. And to be fair, he, he did put it away wet. But literally the following morning, when he got it out of his cabinet to, uh, to clean it up, that thing looked like the Titanic, guys, seriously. It, it had corroded literally overnight. So... You know, I think um, Ruger have upped their game with their coatings anyway. But, uh, you know, I think I think rifle manufacturers now, they, they really need to Cerakote a standard, in my opinion. You know, because you'll never have a corrosion issue then. But that's just my take on it anyway. But yeah, that is a rack and load review of the Ruger Hawkeye Long Range Real nice rifle. 6.5 Creedmoor, like I said. Just an absolute laser beam with that accuracy. And that's me shooting. What more can I say? If Rat can shoot like that, then anyone can. Seriously. I can't usually shoot prone. I'm left-handed. And it's me. So, I think the rifle's done the job there, not me. Anyway, I am going to leave it at that, guys. Thanks for watching. That is the one and only. See you later.